Thanks for joining us for Religious Hard Talk. I'm Ian Boyne. Dr. Michael Abrams is in the house, so you know what kind of uh, house call this will be. A very serious discussion about religion. Uh, Michael is known for his um, work in comedy. Um, in, in my view, one of the finest uh, humorists the country has ever uh, produced. He's enormously uh, talented. But he's also a social commentator who has rankled many persons, particularly religious people. He's a religious skeptic, a deist. But to Christians, he's an, he's an atheist. So he certainly is someone who does not believe in the Bible, does not believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And in many of his Gleaner columns, he has posed some very serious, very unsettling questions to Christians, questions about the God of the Bible. He does not believe that the God of the Bible is merciful. He does not believe that the God of the Bible is loving. He does not believe that the God of the Bible is worthy of, of worship. Today we explore Michael's views. We uh, put the questions to him that I think that you would want me to put to him. And, and we give him the opportunity to explain himself. So Michael Abrams on religious hard talk, talking serious matters. We thank you so much for your company. Michael, good to have you. What a thing. I hope this building is insured, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. You, you know, <laughs> that lighting can start this place, you know that. And I must say, this is not a live program, so don't come here with your placards, right? Right, please. You know, Wayne West and others, you can <laughs> organize your demonstration. Need some water for that one. Another time. Need some white rum for that one. <laughs> Michael, tell us about, I have one of your articles here, Why I Walked Away from uh, Christianity. You mentioned that when you were at university, you, you, your doubts increased. You, you, you really had serious uh, problems with what you saw as a challenge to rationality that uh, Christianity uh, posed. Tell us about your, your journey to skepticism. I, I was raised as a Christian, and I remember as, as a child accepting Jesus from I was in Sunday school. Yeah. I used to go to Sunday school every Sunday. Yes. I started at an Anglican church, then I went to Grace Missionary Church. You went to Grace Missionary Church, an evangelical I church? I spent many years there. And Were you I baptized Sunday, there? I was baptized there as a teenager, yes I was. So, so you spent, accepted Christianity personally. It was not just something that your parents imposed on you. Did, did you come to a point where you They were not churchgoers. My, my father was not religious at all. My oh. mom is a Christian, but she was not a churchgoer. I but see. I was told to go to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And it was thinking about, look, looking back, the way I accepted Christianity, it was really out of fear. And I think many people accept oh, Christianity true. out of fear, especially fear. when it's presented to us in childhood. Yes, yes. And it was a weird thing looking back because they would tell us that God is loving and there's no greater love than God's love. And God knows all the hairs on your head and his eyes on the sparrow and all the lilies in the field. But, but, if you don't accept his son, Jesus Christ, you're going to burn, in, in, burn in hell forever. Yeah. I'm really kind of afraid of sun hot, less, much less fire. So I said, you know, and then they would ask, so who wants Jesus? I was the first kid to put my hand up. Me, miss, me, miss, I want Jesus, miss. Because I didn't want to burn up. That spears you everlasting. Burning. Oh, I didn't want that. I was afraid of that. And then they use even more scare tactics after they accept Jesus. They will tell you things like, no one knows the day nor the hour. And that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. Yes. And that just kept me in line. So even when my friends were doing other things like experimenting with, with sex and that kind of thing, I said, I'm not doing that. So you started late? You started Next thing, getting late? You're too fast. No, man. but I mean, this is not. Don't over pre this, man. You didn't. So what, I'm saying, on, yeah. what I'm saying, what I'm saying, so when, so when they started, I, I said, I'm not doing that because next thing I decided to, to go, home. next thing I decided when to go broke my ducks. Yes. And Jesus turned up in the middle of my, and my ducks broken. So I was totally scared. Oh. And, and I just gradually accepted stuff. I got baptized. I, I was in youth fellowship. Used to go to church. You'd youth fellowship? And I went to a secular school. I went to Priory which doesn't uh -huh. exist anymore, but it, it, it's a, it was a secular school. Yes. And I was so religious that even when I was doing O-levels, they were not teaching it at the school at that level. And I was in 
I was determined to do religious knowledge or whatever it was called at the mm -hmm. time. And I went and did it by myself. Oh, okay. Because this is the right way. Jesus is the only way. So all them Hindu people yes. them, and them know, Lots. it's all about Jesus. It's all about God and Jesus Christ, who is our savior. And I strongly believe that going into university. You, going to university, you believe that? Definitely. Jesus was the only way. Definitely. Only path to God. Since you asked me, yes, I was a virgin when I went there. So, yeah, it You're lasted a virgin, that long. Up to, up to university? Yeah, man, I was, I don't know. So, you never I had believe... You never hanky-panky like, like many did in, you know, early teenage. You too Dalio, fast, man. Just leave it at that. Leave it at that. Leave me alone. So, I went to Yui. So, I went to Yui. And I was still in that mode. Mm -hmm. Because I say, you know, sex before marriage is wrong. Oh. And Jesus Christ is the only way. And then after a while, because I have a very inquiring mind, which mm -hmm. is partly why... I did medicine. I want to understand things. And many people in mainstream Christianity, for example, shun Jehovah's Witnesses. Yes. And I would say, you know, why should I shun someone when I don't know their philosophy or theology? And I would invite yeah, them on the veranda mm -hmm. and say, tell me about what you believe. Why do you believe these things? And I would listen. And I get the books and I read them. And, and some things made sense to me. Like when they said, Jesus is not God. Yeah. I believe that Jesus is not God, oh, and I understand their perspective. Yes. When they say that they don't celebrate birthdays, mm -hmm. that's just weird. <laughs> and the thing about the crucifix, I used to wear a crucifix yes. all the time. And by the time the witnesses done it, me, I, I didn't even know where it is. Oh, they convinced you on that? Oh, yes. It was a pagan symbol. Right, but, but I would listen and I would be, I'd try to be objective mm -hmm. because you can learn things from everybody. And then the Mormons would come, I'd invite them and say, tell me about your belief system. Mm -hmm. And they told me about Joseph Smith and about the this thing about Jesus Christ going to South America. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Yes. But, but I listened. And then the more I went on, the more I'd engage people of different denominations okay. and learn about their theology. I'd learn about the Seventh-day Adventist church. Yes. I have at least two copies of the Great Controversy at yes, home. Yes, Mrs. White's um, yes. book. Mm -hmm. So it was really trying to understand why people but, believe but what they believe. that began to show you the wide contradictions among Christians, reading yes. the same book yes. and coming to radically different conclusions. And I tell people you can put an Adventist, a witness, a Pentecostal and a Catholic at this table, put a Bible in the middle, yes. and they will never agree, agree. on everything. Yeah. But they're going to say my way is the right way. Mm -hmm. And that amazes me. Yes. So, so what, what finally brought about the cracks in your Christian belief, the, the cracks in, in, in your edifice of belief? There yeah, are a few conversations I remember having that, that, that made me start to think. I remember once saying to a friend of mine who is an agnostic that, boy, this Rasta thing is weird to think that Selassie is God. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, yeah, but Christians think Jesus is God, and that's weird. And I said, I never really thought of that, really, yeah. because I was told the same thing over and over, yeah. and I think that how you are socialized has a lot to do with your beliefs. Of course. If, if I were brought up in... in India, you'd be a In Hindu. India, or if I was brought up Thailand, in... Thailand, you're a Buddhist. Thailand, or Japan. Japan. Or yeah, the South country, American yes. rainforest, yes. or the Kalahari Desert. I'd have a different kind of religious yes. background Absolutely and belief right. system. And... It, a lot of it depends on what you're taught. And mm -hmm. if you are told the same thing over and over, and they send you to church every Sunday, yeah. you're going to believe it, whether it's true or not. The brainwashing you know? is complete, if, yeah. If I grew up as a white kid in, in 1920s in America, middle America, and my family was racist. Yeah, black side inferior. Before cable and internet, <laughs> where I don't even know anything else. And they say, listen, black people are stupid, you know. Yeah. And I go to church and they tell me, and my neighbors tell me, and my relatives tell me, by the time I'm 21, it would be very hard to, to convince me that black that. people have sense, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you are fed the same thing over and over and over, it becomes fact. And you, and you don't question things. So we are told that Jesus we are discouraged who, who from was questioning a man things. Who, was, who was living in, in, in first century um, um, Jerusalem, Palestine. And he, he was a man who, whose parents were known by, by people. And afterward, there were some who began to teach that he was God, that he was God in the, in the flesh. Yes. That belief has come down to us, and it, it is accepted as dogma. But it's the same thing the Rastafarians are saying. Just that the Rastafarians are, are, are closer in history to us. Religious skeptic Michael Abrams 
explaining seriously his views, why he does not have the confidence in the Bible that you have, and why does, he does not believe in the God of the, the, the Bible. Michael Abrams, unhinged on religious hard talk. We take our first break.